Imagine this. You get one shot, one chance in your entire life to send a messenger beyond the solar system. Not to return, not to stop, but to keep going straight toward another star. Out there, there are no gas stations, no rest stops in the cosmos. Whatever your spacecraft brings, it has to survive decades of silent, frozen travel alone. Now, maybe you picture a giant rocket packed with fuel, engines roaring like in the movies. But reality is much less forgiving. The more fuel you carry, the heavier your ship becomes and the harder it is to reach the speeds we need. That's the rocket paradox. Even the most powerful chemical engines can't get us to another star, at least not within a human lifetime. So, what about light? A photon doesn't have mass, but it carries momentum. When it hits a reflective surface, it gives a tiny push. Now imagine billions of photons every second, hitting an ultralight sail thinner than a strand of human hair. That's not just an idea, that's a plan. A spacecraft with no onboard fuel, only light and the bold ambition of humankind. I'm James Brown, and you're watching Astro where we explore the very edge of space together. So now, let's find out if we really want to reach Proxima Centauri, just how fast would we need to fly? When we look up at the night sky, it's easy to forget those tiny specks of light. They're not just stars. They're suns, just like ours. Each one could have planets maybe even life, but between us and them lies an almost impossible distance. Take the closest star to Earth besides the Sun, Proxima Centauri. It sits about 4.24 light years away. That's nearly 40 trillion kilometers in cosmic terms, but nearby. But with any spacecraft we've built so far, that journey would take forever. For example, Voyager 1, the fastest spacecraft ever launched, is currently leaving our solar system at around 17 kilometers per second. If we sent Voyager toward Proxima Centauri, we'd be waiting over 70,000 years for it to get there. Now, let's say we want to get there within a human lifetime. We'd need to travel at 10 to 20 percent the speed of light. That's around 30,000 to 60,000 kilometers per second. An unreal speed more than 1,500 times faster than Voyager. But here's the problem. Rockets carry fuel to push themselves forward. The farther you want to go, the more fuel you need. And the more fuel you carry, the heavier the rocket becomes. According to the Tchaikovsky rocket equation, to reach even 10% the speed of light using chemical engines, you'd need more fuel than the total mass of the observable universe. Yes, you heard that right. So we hit a wall. There's no current propulsion system that can overcome this without breaking the laws of physics. Warp drives, wormholes, they're still just theories or science fiction. So if we can't launch a spacecraft the traditional way, what if we could push it from afar? That's where the idea of a light sail comes in. Instead of carrying fuel, we use the gentle pressure of light itself if done right, and if sustained long enough, this tiny push could accelerate a spacecraft to incredible speeds without carrying a single drop of fuel. This is where science meets imagination and where we begin to rethink everything we know about interstellar travel. So if light can push objects through space, how does that even work? Can a photon, smaller than an atom, really push an entire spacecraft? Let's keep going and discover how something invisible, light, might become the engine of our future among the stars. We usually think of light as something soft, gentle, intangible. But light, or more specifically photons, has a strange property, momentum. Photons don't have mass, but they can still push on things just a little. It's like a breeze, so light you can barely feel it. But if you held out a sail big enough and light enough, 
that breeze could carry you forever. This is the core idea behind light sails, a type of propulsion that needs no fuel, no explosions, no burning engines. Instead, it casts light, like a sailboat catching wind, but the wind here is made of photons from the sun or from powerful lasers fired from Earth. When a photon hits a reflective surface, it gives a tiny push. In space, where there's no friction, that tiny push doesn't fade. It builds up, photon after photon, moment after moment, trillions every second. And slowly, the spacecraft begins to move faster and faster. Sounds abstract? Okay, imagine this. You're standing on a skateboard in space. Someone starts throwing ping pong balls at you. Each one is too light to move you on its own, but they never stop coming. After a while, you'd start drifting. And if nothing stops you, you'd just keep drifting faster and faster. This idea isn't science fiction anymore. In 2010, Japan launched Ikaros, a small spacecraft that proved sunlight alone can push and steer a sail in space. More recently, the Planetary Society launched LightSail 2, confirming the concept again, this time with images sent directly from Earth's orbit. But if we want to go to the stars, we'll need to take it to a whole new level. In 2016, physicist Stephen Hawking and entrepreneur Yuri Milner announced a bold mission, Breakthrough Starshot. The plan sent hundreds of ultra-tiny spacecraft called nanocraft each weighing just a few grams, attach them to reflective sails a few meters wide, then fire a gigawatt laser from Earth to push them. Target, Proxima Centauri. Estimated travel time, just 20 years. Of course, these sails can't be big and bulky like traditional spacecraft. They have to be unbelievably light, almost perfectly reflective, and able to withstand insane levels of radiation from the laser without burning or warping and they must remain stable. No spinning, no wobbling, not even a slight drift while accelerating at tens of thousands of kilometers per second. So what makes us think this could actually work? The answer lies in new breakthroughs in materials and design, from nanoscale diffraction patterns to ultra-thin membranes never before tested in space. What once lived only on paper is now being built and tested in real labs a light sail isn't just a piece of tech, it's a symbol. It's how we reach for something we can't touch and turn it into the engine that powers our farthest dreams. But for those dreams to fly, they'll need wings. And those wings must be lighter than we ever imagined. Now, let's explore the latest discoveries, bringing this idea closer to reality. If light can really push a spacecraft across the stars, then here's the next big question. What kind of sail do we actually need to make that happen? This is where theory meets technology. A research team from the University of Sydney, led by Jadon Y. Lin, took on this exact challenge. And instead of building on what already exists, they did the opposite. They started with the end goal in mind, a fast, stable journey to another star. Then they worked backwards to figure out what kind of sail could make it possible. Their findings? Even the best flat reflective sails just aren't enough. They proposed something entirely new, nanostructured diffraction gratings, surfaces that don't just reflect photons. They guide them smartly, efficiently. These surfaces redirect incoming light at specific angles not just bouncing it back, but steering it like a custom-made wind, perfectly shaped to drive the sail in the right direction. This matters a lot, because at speeds of tens of thousands of kilometers per second, even the slightest instability could send a spacecraft spinning, or worse, tearing apart. These nanoparametrons help the sail self-correct passively. No moving parts, no onboard electronics, just precision physics. But design is only half the battle. You also need the right material, something incredibly light, highly reflective, resistant to extreme heat. 
and durable enough to handle a gigawatt laser blast. In their search, the team identified a surprising candidate, molybdenum disulfide or MOS2. It may sound familiar. You'll usually find it in industrial lubricants. But when transformed into a single layer film, thousands of times thinner than a human hair, it becomes something extraordinary. It reflects light efficiently. It holds up under intense heat. And unlike many nanomaterials, it doesn't crack or snap under stress. This could allow us to build sails that are paper thin, yet space strong. Imagine a sail just a few meters wide, weighing only a few dozen milligrams, attached to a tiny spacecraft, and flying across the void as humanity's first light-powered ambassador to another star system. Of course, we're not there yet. These nanostructures haven't been tested in deep space. Their durability, resistance to radiation, and behavior under interstellar dust all still need real-world trials. But we've taken the first steps. The building blocks are there, a sail light enough to fly and strong enough to make the leap between stars. Science often moves quietly, but steadily, and light, once just a symbol of wisdom and hope, may soon become the wings that carry our deepest dreams. But like every great journey, this one too will face brutal challenges. Let's keep going and see what lies ahead. A light sail might carry our biggest hopes for interstellar travel. But let's be clear, this is no simple one-way ticket to the stars. The gap between theory and reality is as vast as the distance between Earth and Proxima Centauri. Let's start with the biggest challenge, energy. Once a sail gets far from Earth, sunlight alone isn't enough. The natural light becomes too weak. So instead, we push the sail using a massive laser beam fired from Earth or space. But not just any laser. We're talking about a focused beam with tens or even hundreds of gigawatts. That's the energy output of a small country. To reach 20% the speed of light, the laser has to stay locked onto the sail for several minutes, maybe even hours. And the focus must be nearly perfect. If the beam drifts just a few millionths of a degree, the sail misses its target entirely. Now imagine aiming that laser at something smaller than an umbrella from thousands of kilometers away. It's a targeting challenge unlike anything we've ever done. Next comes collisions. At those speeds, tens of thousands of kilometers per second, even a grain of dust becomes a deadly projectile. Space between stars isn't empty. It's filled with tiny particles, stray ions and radiation. When you're flying that fast, you're basically diving headfirst into a cosmic dust storm with no windshield. Then there's navigation. A spacecraft weighing just a few grams can't carry big antennas or steering systems. It can't turn around, it can't brake. It just goes. Everything has to be planned in advance. One shot, no second chances. And what about communication? Even if the craft makes it to Proxima Centauri in 20 years, its signal would take another 4.2 years to reach Earth. That first image you receive was taken over four years ago, and with no big power supply, no nuclear battery, no solar panel, the craft has to send that signal using extremely limited energy. Small, lightweight, efficient, but strong enough to punch a signal across light years. And finally, stopping. If there's no way to slow down, the spacecraft will just fly past the target at full speed. It might have only minutes to take pictures, scan for data, then vanish into deep space forever. Some theoretical ideas exist, like using the target star's own light as a photon break, but for now they remain just that, theoretical. Bottom line? Light sail missions face huge challenges, from materials to aiming to communication and survival. Each problem is a technical mountain, but none are impossible. It's like the early ocean explorers, sailing across the Atlantic in fragile wooden boats, no maps, no safety net. Just a dream and the courage to try. And if we can overcome all of it, 
what might be waiting on the other side. Let's keep going. If it works, that first light sail will become the fastest, farthest object humanity has ever sent into space. It won't carry a crew, no massive engines, no life support, no control room, but it will carry something far more important, our knowledge, our ambition, the spirit of a civilization that dares to reach beyond. This tiny craft will pass beyond the invisible boundary of our solar system into a realm where sunlight fades and the sun's gravity no longer rules. It will travel on through silent space, frozen, alone, but carrying hope. When it nears Proxima Centauri, it'll seize every second, capturing the first real images, the first real data from a world beyond our own. Not through telescopes, but through its own tiny eyes. It may not be a living messenger, but it is a flag, a symbol that says we were here, that humanity once dreamed and was bold enough to turn that dream into metal, light, and motion. And maybe 100 or 200 years from now, when our technology has grown, light sails won't just carry robotic probes. They might carry us, the first humans to cross light years, not just to see distant stars, but to stand on new worlds, to plant seeds of life outside our solar system. So what do you think? Can a sail thinner than a strand of hair really carry the thousand year dream of our species? And if you could send a ship to any star, where would you go first? I'm James Brown and this is Astro, where the boldest ideas of the cosmos are told through light, feeling, and story. If this journey inspired you, consider liking, subscribing, and tapping the bell so you won't miss what comes next as we journey beyond the solar system, beyond imagination, and closer to the edge of what's possible. Because who knows, the next great journey might begin with you.